Peace, peace, family. We are now live. Oh, y'all see who I'm back in here with. <laughs> y'all see who I'm back with. Hey, I'm about to bring the brother on real quick, family. I want y'all to get comfortable. Hit the like button. Uh, let me get to a few commercials, family, and we'll be right back. We got a, a real exciting, amazing show tonight. Uh, make sure y'all get comfortable. We'll be right back in one second, family. Hey there. Had a bad dream? I have dreams too. Some parts are scary and some parts are fun. Always remind yourself, it's only a dream and everything will be okay. I had a dream about being in a forest too. Check it out, my pet Petey was with me. Order your copy of Kayla Petey and the Forest on Amazon today. But here, AKA Goddess Guru, let me tell you something. When you think about magical people that seem to be manifesting the life of their dreams, those that have enough resources to do what they are called to do and it just seems like the universe unfolds for them, it's no accident. Many of them are working with supernatural tools. I have created such a tool with my 2023 Angels Unleashed calendar. Go to vickiplanet.com, buy them by the dozens. Let me see you there. It's the numerational session with King Simon. Text your full name and date of birth to 347-496-1022. That's 347-496-1022. And get my books on Amazon now. All right, all right. We are back. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome back Rod Hayes. Peace to the guys. Peace to the guys. Hey, that was Vicky Dillard on there. You know her? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know Vicky. Yeah, you that's familiar? my girl. You familiar yeah. with stuff, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She behind me cracking up, man. She behind me dying laughing. Funny. She's funny. serious about it. <laughs> yeah. For real, for real. For real, for yeah, real. Yeah, yeah. She's dead serious. Shout out to Vicky. Shout out to King Simon. Everybody uh, with the commercials in the beginning. Like I said, Rod, it's good to have you. Oh, another announcement. Uh, Rod Hayes, we're going to be doing a Patreon tomorrow, me and the brother Rod Hayes. So if you are a Patreon member, uh, you can look forward to a Rod Hayes video by the end of the night tomorrow. I just posted a new Phil Valentine uh, about a week and a half ago. So y'all could check that out. And Rod Hayes will be having something new tomorrow. And with that being said, Rod, man, so I... Uh, so th let me tell you. So I called Rod. I seen a video. It's a lady named Dolores Cannon, white lady named Dolores Cannon. And she is a past life regressive therapist. And uh, I think the brother Q Reeves does that. And with past life regression, regression, I'll rather go in more, uh, more, thorough, uh, more, more, he explained it more thoroughly. But basically you can hypnotize the person and tap into what happened in their past lives. So she does that to certain people, and uh, I guess certain entities come through, and um, she has some amazing information that I wanted Rod to elaborate on and kind of explain to the people, because I think it's quite interesting, whether it be uh, alien abduction, whether it be missing time, whether it be uh, ET cover-ups or UFO crashes or these different types of races of aliens or whatever. But um, yeah, we're going to have or the seeding of planet Earth. Uh, so we're going to have a great conversation. Uh, this show is inspired by that. You could, I'm going to put the link after the show. The name of it is Alien Chronicles. You could just type in Alien Chronicles dash Dolores Cannon and it should come up. All right. So with that being said, Rod, uh, before we get started with the main questions, I want to ask you based on the show I've seen. Can you tell me a little bit, because you told me before the show started that you did past life regression on yourself. So tell me what was that what, what was that like and how accurate is that? In terms okay, so first, first thing you got to know, the origin of hypnosis, uh -huh. right? You familiar with the guy Orpheus, the guy of dreams? Yes. Okay. Are you familiar with the guy Morpheus, which was the guy of transformation and illusions mm -hmm. all right so hypnosis um was introduced to the western world through what we call freudian psychology freudian psychology comes in through dr sigmund freud which they call the founder of psychiatry but there was a psychiatrist before him named dr benjamin rush 
who was the psychoanalyst of the rebellious slave, coming up with terms like drapedomaniac. When you don't want to be a slave and you decide deuces, I'm out, right? They say you suffer from drapedomania, which is supposed to be a predisposition to escape uh, slavery or servitude, right? So they declared it to be a psychological disorder for anybody who don't want to stay under the service conditions of a slave or a pauper. It's crazy. So when you look at Sigmund Freud's desk, you're going to notice that he have a lot of what's called African artifacts. This is all over his office. He learned um, psychotherapy, <clears throat> hypnosis, and a few other forms of medical treatment for mental disorders from African shamans and brought it over here as if he discovered it on his own. Right. He was trying to be uh, he was a cross addicted drug addict looking for a way to get away from his addictions. And he heard about <clears throat> something called an Ebo gain ceremony. Which is known to permanently kill your uh, drug addiction, heroin, cocaine, it don't matter. The um, side effect of the Igbo game ceremony is it takes you to meet a deity known as Iwas, right? So this is going into the history of hypnosis. Under hypnosis, the government found tactical uses of hypnosis by a hypnotist whose last name is Esther Brooks. So Dr. Esther Brooks found out how to deliver pieces of information to a general on the other side of the world without the person he's sending the information by ever knowing what he's telling them. Right? So when you're looking at hypnosis, the next thing, the, the next level is called auto-hypnosis, where you become so skilled at the practice where you become what's your own operator. The operator is the person who puts you under hypnosis, extracts information, and guides you to where you need to go. So <clears throat> when I told you for the show, I said, uh, yeah, I did hip past life regressive hypnosis on myself because I studied hypnosis so in-depth that I became proficient at it, and I used myself as a guinea pig to determine if any other parameters that they was telling us was functional in an auto-hypnotic uh, situation. Um, transcendental meditation is a very close relative to auto-hypnosis. So a lot of the things, the only difference is as the operator in transcendental meditation, you don't give orders. You just follow the mind where the mind goes, right? So that's the difference in transcendental meditation in a controlled hypnotic directive. <clears throat> when you do auto hypnosis, the only person that you're going to trust is your higher self to guide you through the hypnosis. So you take your uh, ego consciousness of the present physiological self and you give it to the higher self to show you stuff from your past lives. And that's how I was able to see a lot of the Akashic records on um, the Anunnaki wars and when we was fighting different beings, because I was able to go back through the historical record in my DNA to see that. Um, I also use auto hypnosis to tune into the frequencies on the DNA by asking a series of questions where I can guide myself to a particular ancestor by backtracking the DNA, right? And then I can go, I had got so good at it that I could go back into the mind of an uncle five generations mm -hmm. back and see out of his eyes the life that he was living. That's uh, also around the time I started studying control remote viewing which made that all tie in together and give me a better operating understanding of auto hypnosis and how to use it for greater advantage to extract actual information from the universe. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So now you name the name of this 
show we doing now? What's the name of it? Uh, the Twilight Zone. Do you know who wrote? Who was the author of the Twilight Zone? Who? His name is Rod Serling. Uh huh. All right, Serling is a homonym for Sterling, meaning the silver key. The silver key is the key to the tarot, which is lunar moon magic. The golden key is the key of astrology, which is the reading of the stars and the star maps of times in the universe. Because we move in increments of space, which gives us the illusion of time. As you move through um, um, parts of space, it creates the effect of time based on perception. So you remember a while back, I had a chunk of time missing. You remember that show I did with Young Elder? I remember, yes. I remember, yeah, talking to you on the phone, yeah. Yeah. And the day that that happened, I hadn't checked none of the Schumann resonance, none of the solar flares, none of that, till after the fact. After the fact, I found out we had a massive solar flare. The side effect of a massive solar flare is the solar flare um, alters time. It causes time loops and uh, what we call time dilation and time contractions. I got caught in um, a time loop because it backed me back. When I got done doing what I was doing, it flipped me back on the right time schedule. Whew. Right. So when I was doing the video on Instagram, the time on my clock that I'm reading the time, when I got done, I had did a two hour video, but the time I start, it was almost back to that time. Right. So I had got caught in a time loop from the solar flare. Mm -hmm. The solar flares um alter time when there's a certain frequency that's being um, triggered. So as where it's hidden on the earth determines who's perceptive to the time, to the time dilations, the time changes, right? That's all quantum mechanics in the universe. It's all part of the quantum understanding of the mechanisms of how this universe works. A lot of us won't never notice the time because it'll be smaller increments. Right. And the smaller increments of time that you lose, you don't notice them unless it's like it was like a two and a half hour block of time missing for me. I started a video. Um, I'm going to use a time, for example, because I don't remember the time. But let's say I started the video at seven and I'm going to do the video until nine. When I got to nine o'clock on the video, I said, OK, it's time to end the video. In the video, and then the clock flipped back to seven something a couple of minutes after or before the time that I started the video. So, it, to me, I'm going through the time um, loop in the video, right? So, this, while I'm going through the time loop, I'm recording, but when I go back and play the playback, the times don't match up. Mm. And then people in other parts of the country, they time was the same as it was. So they weren't experiencing the altered time that I was while I was going through it. But right, right. the funny thing, what made me even investigate was when I told young elder about it, he went and did some research and then he did a whole video on it the next day. Mm. So let, let me ask you this. Oh, you, you want to go ahead? Oh. Go ahead. Well, what, one of the things uh, Dolores Cannon was talking about, and like I said, a lot of the questions I got based on watching the video, and I'm like, I got to ask Rod about this. This stuff sounds real interesting, was the unaccounted time that is missing. Uh, a lot of times people are being abducted. Now, but the reason they don't know they was abducted because they don't remember being abducted so could you talk about people missing time based on being abducted but we don't remember because uh we don't remember being abducted because we don't have no memory of it and they do right, that to because kind of, she, said they do that, she said they do that to protect our psyche 
Yeah, the, okay, the trauma. Okay, so if you've seen what some of them beings look like, like if you if you go back a couple months ago, I did a video. I was like, I don't want to see them motherfuckers that don't look like yeah. us. Yeah, you see yeah I don't know. That's some that that's some traumatic shit. But mm. well, you looking at a man with an elephant face, or you looking at a man and he got a face look distinctively like a horse or a lizard. You can't mistake it for nothing else. You know what the fuck you saw. That's a shock to the current understanding of reality that we have as humans. Mm -hmm. They've been conditioning us with it through the comics, having talking animals in the comics, having um, anthropomorphic animals in the comics. Mickey Mouse walk like a human, talk like a human. But why his dog Pluto walk and act like a regular dog? Make it make sense. Mm -hmm. right but goofy walk around and talk like a human but pluto don't right so they condition in our mind to perceive there's some canines that walk on two feet we call them werewolves the ones that wear the wolves right those are the indigenous people over here that was fighting those who we call vampires the blood suckers Right, so this take us back to when they came over here. Take us to that movie Twilight. Right, you see that the natives was the werewolves, mm -hmm. and the Europeans came over as vampires. The vampires is traces to Vlad the Impaler. Vlad the Impaler, um, he was a, a noble in Europe. And he would have bodies on both sides on stakes leading up to his palace to strike terror and fear into anybody coming to see him. Right? So all of these things is preparations in the mind. Telling you the story using exaggerations where the story will stay, but you don't know what it means. Mm -hmm. We didn't know Twilight was based on a true story. Feathers versus feathers. We didn't know that shit. We didn't know that they the ones came over here with that adrenal, adrenochrome shit. But when you go back to the historical record and you read the architecture, you see that all they doing in Rome is grown men molesting boys. They got it in their art. They even got a philosophy called the greatest love is between the man and the boy. Homosexual culture. The Anunnaki push homosexual cultures on people that they're trying to conquer. Once you've been angry penetrated, you no longer fit to be the king. So they try to rape as many boys as they can, spoil as much of the uh, potentials to take over from us on the earth, turn as many of them into same-sex relationships as possible. The gay agenda is on purpose. It's not an accident. Right, which I ain't gonna go too far into that because the gay mafia is, is colder than any other mafia on the planet right now. Mm. They ain't playing. They they last little whole. They having a whole tantrum, <laughs> blowing up shit, derailing trains, all that, just so they can continue harvesting our children for they illicit means. Right. Mm -hmm. So all of those things that's condition the mind so that it don't be so traumatic to see foreign beings that don't look like humans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. To look at the story of beauty and the beast. Right. right. All those stories is conditioned into the mind. The beauty and the beast story is the story um, of the first hero. Um, Enkidu. In uh, what was his uh, in uh, Gilgamesh, right? So all of those stories, they just rehashing the story. They can change part of it. They can mix it up. They can scramble the story, but they just can't erase it because we got to be able to see what they doing to us and put it together. If we ever wake up to who we is, we'll start putting the pieces together, and we'll see the conjure wars all over the world that we was fighting. We'll see our alliances and we'll see the ones that didn't want us to ever come up 
they dirty hands is in all of them dirty pots. They've been caught red handed at every activity from money laundering to human trafficking to drug trafficking. It's the same people behind the whole thing. Mm -hmm. They flash you and you all of a sudden you don't remember none of it. You know, one of the things that was said, uh, she said, uh, Rod, was that, you know, a lot of a lot of time people wake up with bruises and on there and they be like, what the hell? Like, what the you look at your girl like, like, bitch, you just, did you hit me while I was asleep? You know, you like, the hell happened about oh, what I bruised for? And um, Dolores was like, the bruise it comes from um, when you're shifting from dimensions, it could be hard on the body. So a bruise could result from the shifting and the changes of densities. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, that's also possible, but the more likely scenario for the bruising. Remember in the Matrix when Neo was getting his ass kicked in the Matrix and then he was outside the Matrix spitting up the blood? Right, yes, yes. Your mind, every illness is psychosomatic. Every illness. Mm. And you, the body, if the mind doesn't want the body to be sick, the mind can override the body desire to suffer an ailment. It's the same way with the bruising. When the mind perceive it as a real thing, like this is a motherfucker punch you in your eye in a dream and you feel it, you might wake up with a black eye. That's how strong the mind is, you're saying. That's how powerful the mind is. Wow. You can carry the trauma of a, from of a fourth dream. dimension into the three dimension. Wow. That's why um, in native culture, we got something called dream warriors. Mm -hmm. dream warriors know how when you have a nightmare, they can go to sleep next to you and they can fight the battle for you in the dream realm. The, the, these are called dream warriors. Yeah. Wow. Then we got dream walkers. The dream walker can go in and out of everybody dream. Mm -hmm. Then the mother be like, I dreamed about you last night. <laughs> I was just dream walking, strolling through the neighborhood, seeing what the landscape was. Damn. Right, you don't have no memory. You're like they fifty different people. You was in my dream last night. You might not have a conscious memory of the dreams that you had because you wasn't doing work that you need to remember in the waking state. Therefore, you don't occupy the mind with the information you're not about to use. Mm. So you didn't went through. You didn't tutor motherfuckers in your dream. Motherfucker got stuck in this book of life. You helped him change to the correct spelling of the word that had him fucked up. All that went on. Mm -hmm. And when you wake up, you was like, oh, man, I got a good night's sleep last night. But if you a dream walker, you'd be like, man, <laughs> these people be having some crazy dreams. The dream is designed to exaggerate. So when you need to remember something, you remember that dream. Right. When you don't need to remember it, like you hashing out information, you rearranging the data in your subconscious, you don't need to remember that when you wake up. You was just organized and doing cleaning. So you won't remember your dream. And man, I don't never remember my dreams. I got a couple of them I remember. Them the ones that gave you the instructions. To bring back to when you hey when you wake up, don't forget this. I'm exaggerated in here so you don't forget. That's the same way that they do with the animations in Hollywood and the movies in Hollywood. The exaggeration makes the event stand out in the mind. Mm. Right? And you got to know how to read past the exaggeration because the exaggeration is an over explanation of a simple truth. You, you know what's weird, Rod? I would um I noticed there was a time in my life where I was like, you know, I understood the power of the mind, and I was like, I'm gonna stop using an alarm clock to get up at a certain time because I noticed my grandmother never needed an alarm clock to wake up. So I, I used to try to program my subconscious mind that yo, wake me up at six o'clock. I gotta get up at six. And what would happen was strange is I would have a weird ass dream right before it was time to wake me up, and that's what would wake me up was the weird ass dream. And I noticed it just kept happening. I'm like. Oh shit, I wake up with the dream. I'm like, oh, well, I'm supposed to be up anyway, so I might as well stay up. But I would somehow cause myself to have this weird dream. And that 
is what will get me up, man. It was the weirdest shit ever, right? Yeah, because, see, we never used alarm. Alarm clocks is based off Skinner Box programming, the same as the bell in school and the whistle at work. Mm -hmm. That's all Skinner programming. B.F. Skinner, he was a psychologist. Ruined his daughter putting her in a Skinner Box to program her. Right. So if he if he had run them tests on his daughter, he got no ethics. <clears throat> anyway, the body wakes up when you tell it to. It's harder for me to stay asleep than it is to wake up at a given time. The mind can your circadian clock is the natural clock of the body. When you tell yourself, I need to be up by six, you know you better than anybody else, even if you don't know how well you know yourself. Mm. In the dream state, you're going to say, what is it going to take for me to wake up on time? Let me do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to play out this weird, twisted dream, and that's going to get my attention to wake me up. So you end up programming yourself based on the self-knowledge on what's going to wake you up. Mm. Once you get out of shit, oh yeah, yeah, it is that time. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, okay, so on to the topic of UFOs and sightings, one of the things that was said in the video from Dolores Cannon was that it is, and I'm, I'm sure you talked about this before, and I talked about it before with other people, but I want to get your opinion. Is that it's a very it's a very individual thing. Whereas Rod, you could be there, you could be in the same car with your children, and they won't see it, but you will see it. So it's just something where it's you no need to look for a crowd, or even if you want to tell, you know, we want to tell people things. The shit was just for you. So talk to me about the individual nature of reality and how we can see the weirdest shit in the world and it'll be only us that sees it. Light spectrum. Your frequency is allowing you to see a part of the light spectrum that the 50 other people around you vibration don't match. They can't see it. You could see when people come in, it's like it's off, off outside of your field, right in your peripheral. If you relax and it don't scare you, you can see who's standing there in your mind's eye. But with the naked eye, it looked like there's nobody there. Mm -hmm. Right. Perception is ruled by knowledge levels. Mm -hmm. The more you understand a psychic phenomena, the more likely you can process the information that psychic phenomena providing. The human, we got so many ways to learn beyond books and reading. But we use the books and the reading as an accelerated learning program. Mm -hmm. That's why when you, you start hitting the books, you're not hitting the books to learn nothing. You're hitting the books to perceive from another perspective that opens up another field of vision. It's weight lifted for the brain. Rod, this is some good shit tonight, man. I just had to say that. <laughs> I, I just had to throw that in there. This is some interesting shit, man. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Yeah, so we, we read the different books. Then you need to understand the language that the people around you talking. If I want to exclude somebody from a conversation, a 5%er can do it easy. They can exclude a 9 5 percenter um, out of their conversation and have a whole dialogue in front of them. You're right. On the lesson of the day, word born God, don't fall for the okie doke, flip the illusion, turn it around on the queen mother seal. They don't know what the fuck you, the, the, the five percenters know what they talking about. The average doe like them niggas talking gibberish. Yeah, They know exactly what they talking about when they using the supreme alphabet and they spell something out. You don't know what they spell it. It just sound like a word. But to them, it's a whole science to the word that they just spelled. Like, for instance, Rakim got a verse in the song. He says, it's the R, the A to the K I am. And if I wasn't, then why would I say I am? I am. Who is the I am? That's the great God. I am. I am that I am. This is what he told Moses, right? But what did he start it with? The R, the A to the K I am, right? 
The R is the 18th letter. The A is the first letter. That's 19 on the sacred seal on the K-I-M, which is the chem, C-H-E-M, which is the chemical, which is the melanin. Rakim told you all that in one bar. <laughs> I'm just telling you what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the science of the sacred black dot. To operate from the I am is to put yourself in the guy's seat in your mind in order to proceed with guy vision. Mm. Right? Mm. So all of these things, when they say that the, the men are the gods and the women's are the earth, what they telling you? We came to put things in order so the women can tend to the maintenance of the earth. Right? The women tend to the maintenance of the earth by rearing children. Teaching children. The first teacher is who? The mother. The first nurse is who? The mother. Right? The feet of the master. Whose feet are you sitting at? Mama's. What the crow say? God, mother is the definition of God in the minds of the children. The children is untainted. So therefore, their perception of who God is is more accurate than any adult. Right. So the sciences is all there. But when you speak different stocks of language, right in the English language, you got 5% lingo coming out of New York off Clarence putting 13 X father, God, Allah. Then you have that stemming from nation doctrine to tell you where they, they tie it in from. It's a branch on the tree. And you got legalese, which is a whole nother language in the English language based on the dead language, Latin. That's necromancy. That's romance in the dead. Romance is homosexuality. So it's a homosexual conjuring of the dead in the name of the law. Right. So all these things is different languages within the English language. Right. When I go down to southwest Arizona, they speak something called Spanglish. It's a mixture of English and Spanish, right? But you won't know what the fuck they talking about unless you be around them, right? So all these different languages, the subsets of the ling English language on the land divided up by the tribes who's telling us where they at by altering the language of the common people or the common language of the day, which is English. The bloods and the crypts, they all on, they L.A., Compton, Watts, all up in there, and they got different languages for the red and the blue. You all know, you ain't from over there. Dude with this red jumpsuit come on and say, hey, bl hey blood, be me a bigger rip. <laughs> what the fuck is you talking about? I don't know what he's talking about. Nigga, he asked you for a cigarette. He ain't say cigarette. They don't bigger. fuck with the seeds. Right. They don't fuck with the seeds. But when you ask, when a crip asks you do with the blue jumpsuit, come on. Hey, cuz. Let me put a crip stamp on that on that cigarette you smoking. The crip stamp? What the fuck is he talking about? Nigga, he wanted the cigarette. We pass him the cigarette. He wants shorts. In Chicago, that's they say, give me shorts. They got a whole different language. They, they in the rolling 60s is not even using the same crypt dialect as the rolling 20s. So they know if somebody false flag. Because a 20, man, he over here like he is 60. Right? He ain't supposed to fake the funk. You supposed to stand on what you is. All that is the tribes is, is morphing the language. That's why when you start coming up, you have to travel the land to be exposed to the different cultural differences and subtleties on the land. If you don't do it, nature going to make you do it. <clears throat> mm. It's natural, the natural order. You know, uh, what I, uh, I just, you just made me think of something. Uh, one of the things um, just uh, she said in a video was that the extraterrestrials told her that they used to live amongst the people when they were developing nations and give them information so that they could uh, evolve and technology and all that stuff. But she said they told her that they can't do that no more. 
So they put all the information in the atmosphere. So instead of like, you know how the Dogon said the Nomos came to them and gave them, she said they can't do that. So they just put it up in the atmosphere and whoever taps it could tap into it, tune into the to that thought pattern in the atmosphere. They the ones that get it. What you what's your thoughts on that, Rod? She's talking about the Pleiadian light lock. It's the Pleiadians and the Arcturians created a light lock. The light lock is the mental hologram. This is why we don't have fairies and gnomes and shit running around like they used to. Ain't that they don't exist. That's now they have to take on the form of the human or they're not allowed in this realm because we was in the conjure war in the, of galactic proportions, the earthborn versus the Anunnaki, the sky seed. Right. And all of those conjure wars had sub conjure wars under it that was being fought on earth between us and them on the land. So that's why they can't come in, but they can telepathically infuse the atmosphere with the information. But we don't remember that we used to telepathically communicate. Thought is the only thing getting through the light lock, and it's barely getting through because you need a sender and a receiver. You got a whole bunch of people sending, but no receivers. The receivers was turning themselves off in the name of Jesus. Whew. So this information that they're storing in the atmosphere telepathically, is the chemtrails interfering with our connection to that information? Um, well, it depends on which phase of chemtrails, because we got two phases. You got the old regime that failed. Their chemtrails was to terraform the earth for their species if they win. This is why Trump shut down Harp in 2017. A lot of people don't know that. It's not that the weather, weather is not being modified. It's still being modified, but not from earth. It's being modified from ships the station upside just outside the atmosphere. Some of them is being made visible and people seeing them is looking like big discs under the clouds altering circling around and like what the hell is that? The ship they've been here. Mm. Right now they had a fleet of them went to Antarctica almost a month ago. There was something like 70 some ships just rolled in and went on in there and they told the people on earth there was a meteor shower. Mm. And I'm sitting here like, why would y'all tell the people that ball face lie? Them ships. Mm. Meteors don't navigate. They don't make turns and shit. That's a ship. An asteroid don't change trajectory on a dying it doesn't happen mm -hmm. them ships they got they telling us now this big ass ship coming in now one of the galactic federations is cloaked they telling us it's a black hole flying through space with a trail of, of moons behind it I, I think i heard about that come on man it's it's just a cloaked ship Crazy. If it was a black hole, if it was a black hole, one, it wouldn't be moving like that. And two, it wouldn't have a, a debris trail behind it because the black hole would have absorbed all the debris. Mm. Rod, I asked somebody, I don't know about the uh, the letter X. I don't, I'm not sure. I don't think it was you. It might have been somebody else. What's interesting, I just asked you about the chemtrails. And I said that the ETs told this lady that the information is in the atmosphere. The first, one of the main things they do with the chemtrails is they put an X there. Now, when somebody's writing on paper, if you put a, a, a if you put some, a graffiti on the wall for somebody to disrespect you or to say, don't look at this information, they're going to put an X on it. When you get a wrong test mm -hmm. in school, the teacher puts an X on it. So you want to, when you want to block out information, you always put an X on it. Why, do, why don't you put a Y when you want to block her? Why you don't put a U? For some reason, we always put okay. an X when we so want to block So uh, in math, we only, the primary letters we use in math is A, B, X, and Y. Yeah. Right? Right. So the X is a 10, 
X is to mark a spot, right? Like if you look at a prison from the sky, most of these new prisons look like an X from the sky. That's so they can bomb it from the sky. They know so they all they got to do is look for the X, right? Yeah. So they know where they know the building they see. They know where to drop the bomb. Get rid of them niggas. We don't need them, mm -hmm. right? X X is a. a it really means the crossing of two things, right? So when we talk about the X, we talk in crossroads, Baron Samadhi, right? The keeper of the crossroads, yeah. right? The Confederate flag, even right? The Confederate flag, yeah. right? The, yeah. the Confederate flag, that's that's an old native flag. We started using flags when we got invaded. We didn't use flags, we used totem poles. The invaders came with some shit called the law of the flag. We didn't know nothing about no law of the flag because we don't fly flags. We raised totem poles. And when you see the totem pole, you know which clans operating in this region. When we claimed D.C. back, we had to stake a totem pole. So they staked the totem pole in D.C. to claim back the crash site. Then after you stake the totem pole, all you got to do now is capture the flag. You got the superior jurisdiction at that point. When did we capture the flag? We sent the Viking in to do it. The same ones that rescued Scott and Scotia from the hordes of the Catholic Church. That's why, the, that's why when you've seen another Viking, I think it was Australia, did the same thing. He, you have to capture the flag to win the war. That's how you know that we never won World War II. Nobody never captured the flag of Germany. Who got the German flag? Nobody captured the flag. Right? We used totem poles, so the, the Moors used the flag. Now watch this. The flag that the Moorish Empire is using today, it's not a Moorish flag. That's a noble Drew Ali coded message that they tried to steal it and use it to their advantage exposed their ass in real time that flag wasn't the flag of Morocco to like years after Noble Drew Ali uh, got murdered Yeah, look it up it ain't hard to find it's not even a secret mm. and they telling us it's an ancient flag no it's an ancient message the flag is modern the message that the flag is relaying, the red background with the green five-pointed interlocking star telling us something very specific about somebody very specific. That's the star of Venus. Oh. And the imagery from the Moore Science Temple uplifting fallen humanity, who is Noble Drew Ali holding? It just say fallen humanity on her dress. So who's he holding? She's the symbol of the matriarchy, the divine feminine, Venus. Right? So Venus, if you look up the crucifixion of Venus, you're going to see a woman crucified and actually a sister. And it's not hard to look it up. You can Google that shit and go under images and you'll see the crucified Venus. Well, wait a minute. What do you mean the crucified Venus? I thought it was Jesus. This all of the matriarchs, the divine feminines of antiquity have been vilified, lied on, defamed, disgraced by a rogue patriarchal system intending on reclaiming the earth. But this just so happened that Big Mama got a boy for every one of them motherfuckers that thought they was going to take over to stop them. Beat them at their own game. That's what she said. Everything, every lie they tell it, just drag that shit out and expose it. No, the people want freedom, but they don't want to take them steps because the enemy had us that terrified to be free. We rather go along and get along than to buck the system to establish our own. We at the part now where we going to have to establish our own system or we going to have to rely on somebody to do it for us. Them the only two spots we at right now. We either going to get to get our act together, remember who the we is, 
organizing our town, take one city back at a time, raising the indigenous rights in the face of the public. There's nobody to stop us but us and them niggas that look like us. But they're going to be exposed as soon as you try to do it because they're going to be the naysayers. They're going to be the ones trying to get you to go get a nationality and a nationality make you part of a nation and a nation is a corporation. And all corporations is governed under uniform commercial code. And the only way you can do business in the, with a nation is a legal fiction because all nations are legal fictions. That make you a straw man. That means you ain't got no brain. That classifies you as an imbecile in law. This is their doctrine. And this is why they kept beating us. Right? Rob, but the okay. elders, get, get, the, get. elders that, the elders that seen it left enough clues for any one of us to put it together. But we have to be a diligent student with a lot of self-discipline. And that's where we dropped the ball. Don't nobody want to use self-discipline and don't nobody want to put in the labor required for liberation. Because it's not easy. But you can win the war without firing the bullet if you realize who you is. That's the hard part. Because they told you you was something different than what you was. They told you you came on a sardine ship from Africa that's actually the blueprint. The ship that they give us is the blueprint for Notre Dame University academia where the false history plot was hatched as a military strategy. This is how you're going to mislead the people. You're going to tell them they came on ships. Then they're going to think... Still... Yeah, go ahead. Get, get. No, I was going to say... Um... You said something that made me think about symbols and um, it made me think about for those who came in late. Um, what I'm doing this show is I seen a video and somebody said somebody see somebody in the chat earlier said, why are we talking about this lady? Because I want to talk about her. That's why. And this is my I like, show, so I like the Lord. I like the Lord's yeah, canon because yeah. she be telling she be telling you stuff you need to know. Don't yeah. fucking throw away the bad the baby with the bath, bath water. water. Yeah. And that, they love to dictate what you talk, what we talk about. So I'm, I'm, we, we, I'm talking about it today because I want to talk about it. So that's why. If you don't want to listen, then you don't have to listen. But for those coming in late, um, a very interesting video I seen by a white lady named Dolores Cannon, and it, you could just type in Alien Chronicles dash Dolores Cannon, and then it come up. And she's a past life regressionist. And Rod talked about what that is basically in the beginning. And um, she was communicating, she, so she said, with these ETs, and I'm trying to verify and ask Rod, like, yo, what's the deal? Why she said that? Why this? Why that? So for those who came in late and want to know, you know, what we're doing, that's what we're doing tonight. What's the, ar who's the archaic ones? She talked about the archaic ones, Rod. Who's the archaic ones? Those are the, the firstborn or the earthborn. That's the original, what they call them, Goetia. Spirits, okay. Archaic meaning the ancient ones, right? So you remember in um Genesis they called Melchizedek the ancient of days, mm -hmm. and then you remember in um Doctor Strange they called the lady the the ancient one. But these are the the spirits of the earth. Where they came in Titan form, but they take on human form to walk among the mortals. Those mm -hmm. are the archaic ones, the ancient ones. Mm -hmm. How does this fit into the whole timeline? Because you say those were the firstborn. When you talk about Inky and, and Lil and you talk about uh, Sumerian and all that, where do our archaic ones fit into that whole picture? So they they come before? Yeah, they come way before. They were neuter gender. They, did, they was nine gender beings. Mm. And any, um any names? Any any um the the names have been changed over time. Like one of the ancient ones is Tahuti, but Tahuti is also the adopted son of Enki. Right? The story is the story of Loki. All of these stories when they're talking about the Norse mythology, um, Odinism, all of these ancient 
um, myths. The myths is the old stories that was handed down by word of mouth. And it wasn't until modern times that we started to transcribe them in the last 6,000 years or so onto paper to be passed down in the form of a book or pamphlet. Right, right. But the names, the names don't hold up to modern speech. Modern speech that makes it difficult to pronounce the true name of the ancients. Interesting. Wow, very interesting. So in terms of like let's say symbols, one of the things she said they told her was that they put blocks of information in one symbol. And the way that we talk is a very slow way of communicating. They use symbols. So like even the crop circles, there's literally like tons of information in one symbol. And our subconscious downloads this. We don't know it, but our subconscious downloads it, downloads it and use it for the future. Mm -hmm. So how? So Okay, so, should, so should symbolism. We, should, we be looking, should we be looking more at symbols than we do well, at anything else? Symbolism was the first language. When we went from tele telepathy to communicating by writing, we wrote symbols. This is where you get hieroglyphics from. Yeah. Right? You get hieroglyphics and petro petroglyphs from the symbols of ancients leaving a message for posterity. Mm. Right? So you got writings on all pyramids, inside or either outside or both. You got pillars with writing on them they don't, they don't look like writing now a lot of it look like decoration but it's writing mm. it's symbolism right so when you look in that spirals they all all oh, this is telling you stuff spirals circles what we call uh platonic solids um right. the right the symbols the triangle the circle the square all of those symbols be used to build other symbols. It's like an app on your phone, but you're using it in the brain. Mm -hmm. Right? So we start calling the symbols by the names and that's what give us words. And then the hieroglyph morph into letters to spell the word that was once a symbol. <clears throat> like, let's take the SA, for example, S-A. Right. Shout out to uh, uh, SETI. <laughs> but the sign is the symbol for the doulas. And it's a it, it's like a circle with three spirals on it. And it comes off at the bottom like legs open. Mm -hmm. Right. Because they they job is to deal with the women giving birth. The spiral represents the coming down from one dimension into another. You got to come in a, in a loop, right? So when you read narrow tablets, so who do you say that the, that everything is cycles within cycles. So this is represented in the center of the side. The top is the uterus and the bottom is the legs of the newborn baby. It's telling you that she's bringing the baby from one dimension into another. She's greeting them at the gate. The symbol, that one little old symbol. And it's more to it than that because once you understand the role of the side priestess in the community, when you see the symbol, it changes everything. That symbol end up becoming what's known as the caduceus, the modern medical symbol wrapped around the staff. The staff is the symbol for the male virility or the penis, the phallic symbol. Um and the, the serpent wrapping around it is man um, retrieving his offspring from another dimension through the uterus. In other words, procreation and reproduction. Mm. So who are these tall, tall blondes that you always hear about them when you study the extraterrestrial, extraterrestrials, yeah. they always talk about the tall blondes. Because who are the tall blondes? Because we're taught down here that blonde is a recessive trait. So who are these tall blondes? And I don't know how true that is. You could elaborate on that. Well, blind, uh, ge genetically, blonde hair, blue eyes is recessive genetically, right? But it doesn't mean neuromelanin recessive. It just means physical melanin recessive. Neuromelanin is a whole nother animal. But anyway, 
So the tall blinds come from different star systems. You have the ones that come from the Prachyon system, and the Prachyon also have melanated woolly beans, right? Then you got the ones that come with Ashtar Command, come from a different star system. These are all part of the Galactic Council. Then you have um, the ones we call the Nordics, right? And they come from another different star system. They all tall whites approximately between six, five, and seven feet. And, um, but also the melanated ones, a lot of them are tall too. A lot of them are tall and lanky because a lot of the space travel um, atrophy the muscles, right? So they got to have certain things in place to even be able to stand up when they reach their destination, when they fly in the old school way, they before the portals, right? Also, the portal, old school, that's old school. Yeah, that's old school, fine. like get in this, get in this, we doing is old school. Get in the space shuttle, just shoot it out of the atmosphere, when it get out into outer space, then turn on the um, propulsion to get to the destination. That's all old, that's archaic, that shit's so fucking old. We did that when humanity was babies in mm -hmm. science. Wow. We don't even re we don't even know the level we currently at because we've been so miseducated that when we bring up the the old scientific discoveries is new, we amazed at this shit. The healing chamber we call the med beds and healing chambers. Mm -hmm. They were doing that shit in ancient Tibet. They got whole texts on it, right? They was using crystals and music to heal sick people. It's the same thing. All they did was use modern day scientific equipment to register which frequencies and pitch and tones is being used and duplicated it with a computer. Mm. And now they can create a, a healing chamber that can accelerate your healing by tuning in to the frequency of your DNA. Actually can grow a whole limb. Mm. But that sounded like uh a hundred thousand years in the future from now to be able to lose your leg today, go in this healing chamber, put in the medically induced coma for 90 days and come back out on that limb there. Mm. Right. All that's like, it's so futuristic to the modern mind. They don't even know that shit ancient. This is what they digging up in Antarctica. Those cities down there got all of that technology. They don't have to get nothing from no outer space if they don't want to. All of it is here on Earth. We've been doing this shit so long, we forget ain't nothing new under the sun. Right, 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 right. We got whole, the Vimana Sutras is a whole book on aviation flying around in ancient times. How long ago Didn't was that? The, the Vimana Sutras? Yeah, yeah. That was some thousands of years ago when it was written. Yeah. Right? Then you got the uh, Chronicles of the Vermonis Wars. It's a whole other set of books telling you about when they came, when we fought, who we fought. It, it, all that stuff is there. But we so um, walled off from ancient knowledge. Right. So like you get Michael Cremos for being not your archaeology. He going into um, using Vedic sources. He's able to extract history that modern science is just now figuring out. Straight out of the Vedic text. Then he go and find archaeology. How is the hell you got a five million year old bootprint in rock? Mm. If we if if all this shit knew. Right. Remember, time is part of the construct. Time, when we go back to what's called the first time or the forever time, Zep Tepe, we wasn't restricted by time. Time had to be created later. Right. And time was created late in order to um shorten our life sp lifespan. When you don't have time, your lifespan is infinite. You need you need somebody have to create time in order to shorten your lifespan and make you switch avatars. 
You know, a lot of people who live long broad say that the key to living long is they stop counting their birthdays. So yeah. You heard that before. <laughs> Matter of fact, a well-known artist named Prince once said that. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah, it was a couple more people said it too, but he was one of the most famous people to say it. Counting your birthdays, you counting your years off. You you marking that, you counting your prison days down on the wall in your cell. Mm. Looking for a parole, aka death. Death. Mm. Deep. Deep. So we all came down here. Well, we only realize that we just want to experience the emotion that humans feel. I want to know what it feel like to be human. Some of us get addicted to the suffering and the pain because in the fifth dimension and up, we don't feel none of this shit. None of it. You need a body to feel. I, if, if, if you step outside your body and I hit your light body with a gut shot, you're going to laugh. <laughs> it's not going to affect you. But if I slug you in your gut and your physical body, you're going to go... <laughs> You don't feel pain. You don't feel pleasure. You don't feel sadness. You don't feel joy. It's just like you level, you balance. Everything is in balance. So the human, we got to go through a part of our life where we imbalance, emotionally chaotic. They call it going through puberty. Right? Mm -hmm. Once we go, get done going through that, we're supposed to be balanced. So that now we can go balance out other people. This is an accelerated learning program on how to find the balance between self and others. Mm -hmm. Right? So, like when they say, why are we talking about Dolores Cannon? They don't remember what Noble Drew Ali said. I'm going to make the European tell you the truth. Mm. Mm. Is she mm -hmm. a European? Jane Goodall is a European. They all telling you uh, Rudolf Steiner was a European. Frank Bardon Master. was a European. Right? They all telling you pieces of the truth. Yep. Uh, Gerald Massey, uh, what's the other one? Albert Church War. They're Europeans. But they dropping the science for us to put it together because we wasn't allowed to do it. And a lot of us don't 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 know about the history of the Moors in Europe. They um, what you call they uh, they temple hands was pale faced. You can't be exposed to the God science lifetime after lifetime and not learn something from it. Right. They was they was trying to keep them in the perpetual loop. Where they came to sin. That's the great sin. That's the great debauchery. You created a sentient being and denied them the right to ascension. Mm. Now you're going to be punished by your sins, not for them motherfuckers. The same motherfuckers you had your foot on their neck for all them years, now they're going to put their foot on our neck. Ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun, when we was ruling the world for all the millions of years, in fighting. In fighting. I don't like you because your part of the family got more reptilian than my part of the family. We more mammalian. So now we want to fight. So we get to the point that we fighting so much, we go into the laboratory and make a whole new motherfucker to fight for us. And mistreated him. Threw them away in the caves and hillsides of Europe like garbage and pissed off the queen of heaven and earth. All of the good got to suffer with the bad. We've been being punished by our sins, not for them. That's why they had the absolute right to run that reign of terror on us. Mm. And as long as we keep hating motherfuckers, we're going to keep dealing with hate. And you got to get it out of the self before you can get it out of the world. Right, right, right. Right? You can't... You, so, those temple hands, some of them became what you call overly ambitious. 
These are your Prescotts and your Bushes who decided while we was in this Kanja war, Kali Yuga, this is the perfect time for us to take over. And they tried to take over while we was fighting our Kanja war. Trying to find out what side of the ocean we came from. We was already here. We know that much. And we know they came and they brought their servants with them. And when they challenged us to the Kanja War, when the servants wrote down what the Kanja War was going to consist of, under these harsh conditions, they won't even see us taking over. We got the right to keep our foot on their neck, snap their neck, lynch them, burn them, barbecue them, roast them, boil them, fricassee them, hook them up to horses and make them run in four different directions and snatch them apart. We got the reign of terror on their ass because the love of the great mother ain't on earth right now. Then we ain't got no protection. What was she? Why did she withdraw? Because you motherfuckers don't want to listen. The same dumb shit y'all trying to do now, racism, sexism, convert the children into the alternate gender, everything that's uh, was belligerent to nature. You're going to suffer for the shit again if you repeat it. Don't nobody want to hear that part. You keep that's why they always tell us if you don't learn from history, what happens? That's to repeat, repeat it. I learned from that shit. I'm not repeating that shit. So y'all gonna have to get y'all shit together, listeners, because I'm not finna go through that shit. I don't right. give a fuck. You got right. good motherfuckers and you got foul motherfuckers. All the foul motherfuckers can go where foul motherfuckers belong in a foul ass place together. And all the good motherfuckers can continue to go about following the great law as caretakers of the land, air, and the water. That's all. That's my perspective, right, man. This was this was this was amazing. I appreciate you for dropping this info. I want to put up your cash app real quick. Somebody's in the chat. They was like, uh, they wanted your cash app. Uh, sick mm -hmm. S I K, uh, capital A P E sick eight. Uh, for those who want to support the brother, uh, the brother's cash app is on the screen. Dollar sign S I capital S I K capital A P E. Yeah, man. Make sure you support this brother. This brother's a gem to our community. Uh, another announcement. I'm gonna get to some QA real quick before we get out of here. Uh, uh, but before the QA, um, a reminder to everybody, Rod will be on Patreon tomorrow. We're doing a Patreon video tomorrow on um the uh the principles of the magnetic field you know we all of us have this emf field it's going to be an amazing metaphysical video and um this i, I ain't going to give too much away but it's going to be a video you don't want to miss and you want to want to learn how to tap into and utilize and grow your magnetic field to where you you know you like god on earth down here so uh, that's going to be tomorrow on patreon um i don't know what time it'll be up late I don't know. I don't even know what time me and Rob are going to do the video. I got to talk to the brother uh, in the morning or later on tonight. But with that being said, got the brother's cash up, up. up. Give me some questions. Give me some questions before we get out of here. The brother came on here and dropped it big time. For those who came in late, make sure you check out Dolores Cannon video, Alien Chronicles. We're basically just going over the video and I'm, I'm, I'm asking some questions based on what Dolores Cannon talked about in that video. The name of it is Alien Chronicles. All right, let's get some. Somebody say, what year are we actually in, Rod? I mean, you, you, you can't, depending on what calendar you're using. The, the year is subjective. It's subjective to which calendar you're using. So if you're using the Islamic calendar, you're in the year of 14 something. But if you use in the Ethiopian calendar, you were in like 2012. The regular Julian calendar or Gregorian calendar we under, we in 2023. So depending on what calendar you use, and and each one of those calendars come with a set history attached to it. 
right? That's in order to restrict you within the confines of that calendar's understanding of reality. Mm -hmm. It's to shift you on a timeline they want you on. Mm. I don't accept none of the timelines as anything other than a tool. Mm. The, the codes come in on numbers. And when you use the numbers for the date, the month, and the year, those numbers is telling the message. Like this is a seven year. This is a year of completions, of perfecting things. Right? In the eight, in the eight year, right, it's a review year to review everything you did in the seven year. 2024 is an eight year. 2025 is a new birth. A new reality comes on the heels after you've assessed everything to be completed properly. All that's all science is going back to. It, it, so it don't matter the history attached to the particular calendar is going to have what you call standout events. And each standout event is going to fall on a day which has a set of numbers that go to it. Sometimes the calendars will have an event that is a different day under different calendars, right? But it's the same day of the week, but it's a different date. All of those things come into translating the deception from what they what's really going on. Mm. Let's get to the next question. Tips on opening the throat chakra. Breathe like a singer. Hum often. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. Hey, Yoda. Yeah, 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 Hey, 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 hey. So uh, that's our traditional tribal throat chakra exercises. That's why it sounded like Native Americans hopping around the fire, as they told us. Right. What we used to do is singing the blues. Singing the blues, telling the stories on the song, on the drum. We refining the throat chakra, right? Mm. Speak your truth. The most powerful activation for the throat chakra is to tell the truth. The more you tell the truth. Now we're going into Ryan Karinga's Husia. Authoritative utterance, exceptional insight. If you have the exceptional insight to tell a deep truth, it shakes all of the cobwebs off your throat chakra. Also, to exercise the throat chakra, other than breathing like a sing singer humming and yodeling and talking your truth you can also listen to frequencies you have a throat chakra frequency when you know what the frequency is listen to it and um, in your mind's eye envision your throat chakra opening up and all of it it'll change your speech intonations where it comes from a deeper place. If you hear Paul Robeson sing bass or my man from the temptation singing bass, they using the throat chakra harness from the solar plexus. And the because of the um, vocal cord density causes their voices to be heavier versus your tenors like um, um, David Ruffin, Eddie Kendrick, right? So your stylistics, <clears throat> your shy lights, uh, the high tenor, that's more intonation from the upper throat and less from the diaphragm or the gut, right? So all of that is contributing factors to the throat chakra ac activation. I didn't know your answer was going to be that thorough. I ain't going front. <laughs> I, I ain't going front. I, I think yeah, I, I'm sitting here listening like, word? I know your answer was going to be that though. Like, hey, the crazy thing is, is um, when I, before I started this, um, my lady told me I had to go find out what was wrong with my throat chakra. Wow. <laughs> and she told it to me in a code that I didn't figure out for like a month. Mm. 
Deep. Wow, bro. Woo. Uh, next question. Greetings, Rod. How can I remember where I come from? Look, this is a good exercise for anybody. Write on a piece of paper, who am I? Mm. Right? Where did I come from? How long have I been here? Right? Just write it out. The, the, the side effect of that is this. Nobody's there to give you the answer but you. Mm. And your higher self has to follow the universal rule of truth. It cannot lie to you. And even if it did, you're going to know you lying. Trust your instinct when your up higher mind tell you you come from this part of the country. You was an old uh, tribe that don't even exist no more. The, the Itty Baba tribe. That's what tribe you come Nobody don't know that tribe no more. But guess what? Your ancestors vibrational frequency can answer you on that line when you remember who you is. So when you write it on the paper, review it every day for 30 days, then burn it. That's using the power of fire. That's doing two things. It's burning the question in your mind while you're watching the paper burn. you transferring two-dimensional to three-dimensional. Once it gets to the three-dimensional burned in the mind, the fourth dimension say it's a hurry on it. This is the purpose of fire bending, right? When you use the fire, the fire tells the subconscious urgent. It's just like sounding a fire alarm in real life. Ooh. Everybody know to get out the building. Mm. Uh, next question. Is it true that a migraine spiritually means you went through a shift? Sometimes, but not all the times. Migraine sometimes is you going through a spiritual shift, but sometimes is heavy metals is uh, concentrated on the um, synapses, causing a misfiring in the brain, in the prefrontal lobes, which is causing a, um, a discomfort that the mind has to translate as a headache in order for you to know something is going wrong. Okay. Uh, what do you think about the train derailment in Florida? Um, it's the part of look, I did this on, on Young Elder, but people still not getting it. Get a map, hot spot human trafficking in America, and lay the train wrecks over top of the map. You will see that the deep state has been activated and they throwing tantrums derailing these trains trying to cause chaos on their way out mm. don't feed into that shit they can do whatever they want as long as they leave we don't care we can clean it up i don't care what it is it could be a nuclear bomb uh, cracked open and seeped out nuclear waste we have the means and the technology to clean all that shit up just let them motherfuckers go. Don't feed into that narrative so that they can't have any. When we get into the frenzy, they feed off that to get strength. Right. right. When we ignore everything they're doing, they start losing power. That's all they're trying to do. They babies throwing tantrums for attention right now. Woo. They got caught with the hand in the cookie jar. And whether they take this ass whooping they finna get, they rather fall out on the floor, have a full blown tantrum because they got caught. Then they just go and take this ass whooping and go home. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh man, uh, we gonna do a couple more questions. For your family, this was this was some shit tonight, y'all. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Make sure y'all support the brother. This was this was this was one of them. This was one of them tonight. This is one of the episodes tonight. Shout out to Rod Hayes and his ancestors and his spirits for working through him and allowing him to uh, deliver this level of information to the masses. Definitely shout out to all of y'all. Uh, next question, Rod. What can you tell us about dream animals or individual spirit animal? So when you're looking at the animal kingdom, which you are encyclopedia animals, every animal 
there's a different radio frequency that the mind can tap. When you have an animal to continuously come into your dreams, nine out of ten, that is your totem animal trying to get recognition from your ancestral lines. Mm. That means study that animal. The more you know about that animal, the more you know about the character and the nature of the tribe you're from. This is why we use totem poles instead of flags. Because we was relaying spiritual information. We wasn't trying to conquer nobody. Mm. But those animals hold messages for us. The more we know about them, the more we can communicate with them like Dr. Doolittle and telepathically be linked to them. But we don't know it because they told us all of that was evil devil worship shit, which is not true. It's part of you being a custodian of the planet that you have a telepathic ability to ask the tree what's wrong with the forest and the tree give you a coherent and competent answer. And we don't remember that stuff because they erased it from our memories by telling us it was evil, wicked, and that anybody that do it was going to hell. We don't have hell where we in our culture. We don't have an eternal damnation location that don't exist in our culture. That was given to us by somebody who wanted their heaven on earth at our expense. Mm. And, our, and ours, we always graduate when we die. We didn't die. We graduated to the next level or the next ancestor that's elected to come back and help to change the future for seven generations. That's the culture of us. That we don't got nothing. Hell came from the Middle East. The city of Ur is the city of fire. Ur means fire. When they tell you Ur the Chaldees, Chaldees mean Chaldean mean people of the flame. The flame is Gehenna. Gehenna was the trash dump burnt with the sulfur in the, uh, over the coals, which you get your fire and brimstone story. And the rest of it comes from Dante's Inferno. That don't got nothing to do with us. All that shit came from Europe and the Middle East. And had nothing to do with us. Don't got, the people in India don't know what you're talking about when you're talking about hell. Mm. But they know about suffering on earth. They know about karmic debt. They know that if you want to be uh, rewarded on earth, you treat people good on earth. They don't know nothing about you're going to get your reward when you cross over to the other side. That's not part of none of the earthborn doctrines. That's all external forces that's coming to control us. Heaven and hell, the university earth is designed that when you discover who you are, who you are, it activates the payout. Right? The payout is it tells you how to communicate with your people for them to remember who they are. Once there's enough of y'all to get critical mass of remembrance of who you are and where you're from, then you activate the return of the sweet water. That's all this was all ancient voodoo. Right? And we calling them the seven African powers. They all govern one of the seven chakras. And it's all part of the seven um ancestral spirits that the Hebrews call Elohim. They stole all that stuff and renamed it because they can control it if they rename it. Mm. Anything you name, you control. If you don't name it, you don't own it. That's why when you look on the map and you pull up biblical cities in America, they think that they discovered that this is the biblical land from the Bible. That's not what you discovered. You discovered that they use the Bible to name parts of your land so they can deceive you. Look at the date it was named and the city was chartered, and that's going to tell you how long it's been that name. There is no ancient Jericho in the United States that's before 1492. There is no ancient Jerusalem in the United States before 1492. All of the cities with biblical names you see, Bethlehem, they was named post-1492 Columbus invasion. Stop letting them trick you. When they start telling you that the, the Egyptian shit, Egypt was Hollywood. 
played out in Africa, just on the opposite side of the continent. Take your map, fold Hollywood over Africa, it's going to be right over Egypt. It's the same fucking shit. But it was only there for one reason. To pass to posterity something called the holy drama. Without the holy drama, we don't even know why we're here in this condition. We know we on earth, we conscious of that much, but the purpose of us, what we working toward as a collective is tied to the holy drama. The holy drama is told in every ancient culture on the planet. The Dogons tell it, the Zulu tell it, the Hopi tell it. So it had to be written just like the Georgia Guidestones had to put us on notice of what the garden plot was. The same way the great holy drama had to tell them motherfuckers that came, y'all done got us in the world of shit. And this is the blueprint of how we going to get out of it and you can't do nothing about it. Rod, last question, my brother. How important is the earth to the universe? It's as important as you make it. Look, when you look in that earth, from outer space, the distance, it's just a speck of dust until you get right up on it. So you ask yourself, when you see another planet out there, what significance do they have to the universe? It's the same significance. Now, take all of them away. What significance do they have to the universe? So our perception of reality is our universe, is our universal comprehension <clears throat> when we start breaking it down to dark matter the grid system and the layers of creation the fabrics of creation all we doing is trying to find out why we here where we at and how we got here them the only three questions humanity has ever tried to answer and we didn't have an answer and every time we send the answer into the future they drop the ball this is University of the Earth. We're here to learn how to balance polar opposites, right? We decided to go through struggle so we can feel human emotion. The emotion is not something that the gods have. They're not emotional creatures. they pure information. Whole light body is a body of knowledge. To activate your light body in the physical form is your highest human attainment. And the only way you can do that is you need the time to study yourself. So now you find out what's your position in the universe. How relevant are you? That's the same relevant the earth is to the rest of the universe. How the same relevant you is to humanity. Hey, Rod, I, I got a question. And one more question. I got to throw, throw this one in here. Just mm -hmm. um, When you have a loved one down here, like because you just said the uh, the higher self, you know, it does, it's pure, pure information. It's not emotional. When you have a loved one and if they feel pain, whether it be a son or a mother or your wife, uh, you tend to feel that pain if they feel pain, because we understand we're non-local and we, um, you know, you, you could feel what they feel when we go through something. I'm wondering, is it not like that at all with a higher self? Because we are attached to a higher self. Can they feel somewhat? What we feel because they're just like you're attached to your mother and your son, a higher self is attached to us. They could somewhat understand the emotions that the, we're going through. The, the higher self comes in when you purify the ego to experience your emotional roller coaster of life. You got to purify the ego first. This is your training and finding the first balance, taming the ego self. The earlier you tame your ego, the more active your higher consciousness becomes in the physical body. The emotions was created as the navigation system for the avatar. It wasn't supposed to be the phenomenon that it became. Mm. It attracted people from far and wide across many galaxies to come and experience the process of being human, this shit called emotion. It was the main attraction. Yeah, but it wasn't meant to be. It wasn't meant to be. It was originally like sensors on the Mars rover. Telling the Mars rover how to navigate Mars. Rod, man, get the fuck out of here. 
That, that's why you can read the emotion. Look, you can read the emotions like you're reading the lights on the dashboard. I think it said it was like sensors on a Mars rover or GPS. Wow. Mm -hmm. Another way to say, I, I heard, um, damn man, this, I gotta watch, I gotta watch this one over. <laughs> well, Rich, look, to me, I just be having the basic conversation to you, with you, and you be asking the questions that most people would not, wouldn't be asking me because they, when they see me, they automatically assume there's no way this motherfucker know. <laughs> <laughs> right? So they don't ask me them kind of questions. They ask me more like, oh, he might know about herbs. So let me ask him about some herbs. They're not going to ask me about um, nothing about Dolores Cannon information. Now they start to get to the point where maybe we jump too fast, but he might be <laughs> a little bit smarter than we gave him credit for. Uh. <laughs> but this is like, it's like, I be fucked up that other people don't know it because I don't see myself as being smarter than nobody. Mm -hmm. I just see myself as looking at stuff they didn't. Right? Yeah. So when you ask me a question and I answer it and it sounds like it's a great answer or whatnot, I'm like, yeah, but somebody else know the answer better than me. Mm, mm. Right? I told you, multiple lifetimes, I follow behind my big brother who turns out in this lifetime to be a scientist named Billy Carson. And I watch him uh. have conversations with people of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Right? I remember this shit. And when I first seen him, it like scared the shit out of me. I thought I was having a um a mental break or a schizo episode episode. And then he turned out to be a scientist. I'm like, every time. <laughs> right? So in, in past life, I used to follow him around and I used to be like, man, I'm gonna be like my big brother. And I'm like looking at this guy in this lifetime, it's like got me shook that I'm seeing him but he not physically in the family blood related to me in this life. And that was like, I thought I was really having a full-fledged psychotic breakdown. Wow. So I started doing math problems. Math problems? Yeah. Like, so like look, if you ever think a person is having a, a schizoid episode or a nervous breakdown, give them a page of math problems the logic will tell you if they insane or not. Wow. You can't follow logic if you are insane. Wow. It won't, it'll keep going off, it'll, it'll keep going off grid. A uh -huh. good psychiatrist that gives an insane person uh, a series of math problems can tell you exactly why that person is fucked up. Mm. It's how we perceive the numbers and what the numbers mean. But you can't, when you're insane, you can't do logic. You can't do math, basic math. I mean, like, seven plus seven to an insane person is probably 632. <laughs> but to a sane person, it's 14. Yeah, yeah. Right? To an advanced person, they might see seven times seven and they tell you five. Mm. That don't mean he's crazy. That means he just didn't stop at the 14, one plus four equal five, he's still right. Mm. Right? So the psychiatrist will know to look at that. Right. The lay person, they won't know what to look for to determine the cause, but they'll be able to say, oh, we need to get you to the doctor because you're having a mental breakdown because you, you ain't got no logic left. You can't do logic. You can't do math if you are mentally... And um, broke down. And when when you go through a psychic break, you can't do math. Mm. You keep giving them math problems until they start thinking logical again. Is one of the treatments they used to use. It's deep stuff, man. Deep stuff. Yes, yeah, neurological retraining. Neurological retraining. Yeah. You so you're retraining the brain to get back on the logic by doing math. Mm. That's why the Japanese got Sudoku and all that, and we got crossword puzzles. Oh, wow. Right? The crossword puzzle is good, too, 
but it's not as good as Sudoku because it teaches you how to layer your intelligence on top of itself. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different science involved in the in the mental development. Right, right. Damn, man. Hey y'all, I want to thank y'all once again. We got damn, we got a packed house, right? We got about 4400 people in the in the building. So shout out to everybody in the building. Let me put the brothers um if you want to support the brother Rod Hayes Cash App, I'm going to throw mine's at the bottom as well if you want to support the channel. Tell the people before we Oh, also, once again, Rod's going to be on my Patreon tomorrow. My Patreon is the same name as the channel Black Magic 363. We're going to be talking about some metaphysical stuff tomorrow, so you can tap in with that. That'll be up by the end of the night. Rod, I want you to tell the people uh, how they could contact you. That's the most asked question. Do you right now, right, right now, if they don't catch me on you or Dr. G or Young Elder, Big Mama got me on the sideline. Mm. Right? But I have to reciprocate with y'all three because she told me to. Mm-hmm. Right. So right now, the only thing I got scheduled is with you. But um, my Instagram page is the sick eight T H E same as the cash app, but instead of the dollar sign T H E in front of it, um, my Facebook is Ryan Hayes. I still post. I just haven't been doing lives and I haven't been doing uh, Q and A's. Um, I'm probably gonna do something with Young Elder Saturday. Okay. But I'm not sure because I haven't talked to him yet. Um, other than that, I just got Patreon with you tomorrow and I'm waiting up by ear what Big Mama say. Hey man, keep, keep doing what you're doing, Rob, man. He's a motherfucker, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's a motherfucker. Hey family, thanks for tuning in once again. This is brother Rich Rod Hayes and we signing out here, out of here family. See you, see, see y'all tomorrow, right? Peace. Peace to the guys. Yes, yes.